Okay guys, welcome back to the channel's BMW Dr. Dean here. Today we're going to be changing the CCV on their M52 engine as as you lot know it's uh, losing a lot of oil and usually a common cause of this is usually due to a blown um, pit CCV on these. Well, also we're going to be changing the valve cover but that's going to be on another video because obviously when the CCV ruptures it ends up blowing the valve cover. But as you can see here, I'm now going to start and you're going to see that I'm going to start removing the air filter housing. Um, I've done this in one of my previous videos. So obviously first of all you want to remove the bolt here and here then what you want to do is get a six mil socket or flathead screwdriver usually it can be a phillips as well and just unbolt the clamp hose that goes onto the back of the air box here and undo the math sensor with a flathead screwdriver or a pin pin needle to pull up the math sensor then obviously just pull this um, rubber boot off and the air filter will come straight out obviously we're going to be changing the air filter before we put it back in anyway after that we're going to want to disconnect the intake hose intake duct from the throttle body once that's off, we then got to take the throttle body off the intake manifold, which is just held on by 10mm bolts, four of them. And then after that, we can then start freeing up the manifold to take the manifold off. But we got uh, after that, sorry. Um, once we got all that off, we will free up the manifold. Then we're going to take the drain, the drain hose out for the CCV, which connects the door back to the drain pan. So we've got to pull that one out, and we'll be back once I've done all, once I get all that done. Okay guys, so as you can see, the power steering reservoir is in the way um, and it makes it a lot easier. You can get to the bolt at the back here, which sits on the back of the throttle body, but I find it easier if you just disconnect these two 10 wheel bolts and then just move the power steering reservoir over to here. It does slide, it ain't gonna leak. You just make sure the cap's tight and just move it over. Once it's moved, you can get your hand behind the back. Usually I use a socket, you can use a screwdriver, but it's easier to use a socket to reach around the back there and with a long extension and just unbolt the Jubilee clip with a six mil socket again. And then obviously you'll be able to get to the hose and pull the hose off. And obviously once that's off, then it will show your full round for the 10 mil bolts for the throttle body. You want to disconnect the connector as well and take the connector off. And obviously unplug, if you've got dissers, unplug the disser valve connectors and obviously any of con connectors that are down here. Obviously there's a purge for the purge solenoid. You want to take the connector off that. And obviously there's a bracket down there as well. Well, the uh, electric, electric harness runs over here i wouldn't advise trying to pull it off what i would advise is releasing the two torx bolts and letting it hang in the engine bay because the majority of the time they break and then they're swinging in the engine bay you don't want that especially on this car with a load of electrics so as you can see guys i don't know if you can see right down here let me just get it down there as you can see the 10 mil bolts that sit around the throttle body housing which are right here here and all around there as you can see i've disconnected the connector okay so as you can see down here these are the 10mm bolts that I'm now going to release which are right here and obviously they just crack off very easily because they're not meant to be too, too tight anyway so you just want to release all them which are like I said a 10mm socket and obviously once they're out you want to put them somewhere safe try not to drop them in the engine bay because otherwise you'll be removing your skid plate to try and get to them they are quite long as well and they come with a washer on them so try not to use the washer usually the washers don't come off them they're usually pretty good they usually stay on the bolts so as you can see that's the length of them right there they're quite long some will be a pain to get out but i do advise just putting a bit of force into them to try and get them out if they don't this will probably where it's never been out before this intake manifold well, obviously i'm going to show you the wiring harness in a sec once we get the intake manifold off um sorry the throttle body and i'm going to show you what I mean by um, the Torx box to release the wiring box, which is underneath here. Obviously, when you have one bolt left, you will realize that the throttle body will drop down and then you just need to hold it up. Usually they might be tight sealed, depending if my one, for instance, how many times I removed it is now loose and it moves freely, but usually it's, they're seized on. You must give them a hard pull to release them. Most people usually break the junks and box down here. Obviously, you don't want to really be doing that, but if you have no choice, you have no choice. Sometimes they will be broken when even garage is trying to get it out. But as I say, that's the throttle body removed. Obviously, this has had a new boot on it. And as I can see already, it's covered in oil. That just shows the CCV's blown because oil's getting inside the manifold. Yep, and it's covered in oil in there. Yep. So that means we need to change that. This boot's been already been recently replaced on the throttle body. I think they probably thought it was the boot. 
because that should that was that should be orange not green so someone's already replaced that okay guys i don't know if you can see but as i told you before someone's already been at this because as you can see this is all free so it's already missing a bolt as i said to you this is the majority of the cases where people have already been down here once before and as you can see it's only held on by one torx bolt which is a um torx 30 so there's usually two of them, you want to just release them. I find it easy to do that way than pulling this and pulling this and breaking the clips that this sits on. So you just leave this hanging and you can take the intake manifold off. Obviously you also want to take off this hose, which is the brake booster hose for the air, that pulls the for the airline. So you want to just pull that off, which is easy with a flat headed screwdriver, just pull, push the clips in and pull it off, which we'll do after. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to release this torque fault, which is right at the back here. Now, obviously, you just want to grab the bolt straight away because you can see how small they are. They're very tiny. Um, I did lose one when I was doing it on my car and I had to rebuy a new bolt. But as you can see now, the whole wiring harness is free from the car and that's what you want. Obviously, the purge valve can, can stay connected. Now, what you want to do is get a flathead screwdriver. You want to get a flathead screwdriver and then just pull this off, the booster pipe, which runs here, which does seize on. So you've got to be careful not to snap it as well. These do seize on, it's common. Where the seal, this is another reason why most times they're never released and they just seal on. As you see, it comes off from there. So now that's off. Now what you want to do is you want to reach down to here. You have to put you have to feel deep and you have to feel for the hose for the CCV, which I know where it is, thanks to doing my car not too long ago on this. And what you want to do is you want to grab the pins on the on the hose and you want to pull, pull, push down and up to release the hose that's the ccv hose off now what we want to do is we're going to release the bolts here for the intake manifold and we also need to release i believe all the wires at the back here so the pcv heater as you'll know that caused your house to set on fire and you also want to release, if you've got another disavow, if you've got the three stage manifold, there'll be another connector here for the three stage manifold. Obviously this one don't have it, it only has the one disser. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove all these bolts. These are, I think, are 11 mil, if I remember correctly. They're not a 10. So I'm just gonna get an 11 mil socket and remove all these bolts. Okay guys, so I'm using impact sockets for this. As you can see, it is, it is, it is an 11, as I said. What you wanna do is crack the nuts off. You don't wanna do, do too rough with them though, and the same for putting them back on. You just want to release them and as i can see straight away because they're very stiff this manifold's never been off before which means the ccv's never been replaced and as you can see they do release you just want to leave them all free you don't want to take them off now you want to screw them off unscrew them by hand so in a minute we're gonna have to go around and pull off that intake hose the ccv hose from the rocker cover because that's the rocker covers coming off anyway so it doesn't really matter I'll be replacing that hose so as you can see you just unscrew them by hand it's easier to unscrew them by hand than just dropping them even though the manifold's coming off they'll probably drop down and you can get to them but the whole idea is you don't want to try lose them at all and always keep them separate from the throttle body bolts because you'll get confused Okay guys, so now the manifold's free, all you want to do is pull up like that and as you can see it lifts up. Now as you can see it's already released but what I need to do, as you can see there's the other disc for the other, if you've got a three stage manifold that's the other connector. We need to release the PCV heater and then we can take the manifold out but we also want to release the other disc valve which we need to get underneath and just prise it off with a screwdriver, the connector as you see like so, like that and obviously there is nothing else to disconnect apart from this crankcase vent hose which i want to go around and do now 
So now what, what I want to do is I want to get to the PCV, which I couldn't get to because that strap race in the way. And you just want to release it. Like I say, don't worry too much if you break it. They will break anyway, regardless. You usually once these are on, you can't get them off without breaking them. But as I'm replacing it, it doesn't really matter. Now, that's off. Now what you want to come and do, I'm going to pull all the connectors from the heater, heater control out, which I'm doing now. And you just want to make sure that the heater control is out, which is the bottom one, which it is, which sits down, stays down here. And you want to lift the manifold up. Be careful of the fuel line. Don't worry too much about the pipe here. That will come out the way on its own. Now these are a bit fiddly to get out. That one there. What else is connected down there? Just trying to see. Nothing's connected, that's it. Swap. Now as you can see guys, the manifold's out. Now, what I would advise is when the manifold's out, it's a good time to replace your starter motor. It sits down there. Now, by the looks of it, this starter motor's been replaced. That looks new. <clears throat> so there is the cause of why they've had this manifold off and why they've been at this car before. That's the whole reason there. Now, as you can see, if you can see this, there's oil from the manifold. So the crankcase ventilation is completely blown. There's oil all around the seal, so I'm gonna have to clean that up. So as you can see, guys, yeah, as I was saying, oil is all around the manifold which means it is signs of a blown PCV. What I think's happened is they've took this off, haven't refitted the PCV properly, and it's caused an oil leak. So now what I'm gonna do is now this is off, I'm gonna fully inspect all around the engine, and we're gonna inspect it. Obviously this is an original BMW CCV, as I can see it is. And as you can see, it shows there on the video, BMW, it's all BMW parts. This has never been changed. Hence the reason why it's failed. So we're gonna be replacing it for a new one anyway. Okay guys, so I don't know if you can see, but there's all oil running down the block here. Now, most people think that's a blown head gasket. It's not the head gasket. This is the gasket between the head and the cylinder and the block. Well, what you have is oil has been leaking past the gaskets on the in intake manifold and down the block where, it's where the PCV is ruptured and blown. So what it's doing is leaking it down and leaking it out of here, straight onto the block. So that is the main cause of this problem, a blown PCV, but it's a shame it wasn't replaced in time because if it was replaced in time, it would have saved the valve cover. But I'm just looking at the valves, and the valves, so my torch off, look actually really clean. Yeah, the valves look very clean. There's no carbon buildup on them or nothing. So that means that's been done. Maybe they've been using injector cleaner a lot. But from what I can see, there is no other leaks. As I say, the starter motor has been replaced. I can tell because Auto Electrico, which is a different brand. It's not original BMW original brand. Um, you can see as well, they've got new aluminium bolts on it, which is right here. They're all blue, two blue, which is brand new al aluminum bolts. They're going to the bell housing. Obviously, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna now replace the CCV. I'm gonna show you how to do that all on the CCV, on, obviously on the bench, as we can't do it on the car, because I need to unbolt everything and bolt everything back up. So we're just gonna go quickly go and get that done. And obviously we're gonna reset, back, uh, put the intake manifold back on and bolt everything back together. Okay guys, so obviously now it's on the bench. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna crack off all these clips from the PCV heater. We don't need to worry about taking them off carefully because the whole thing's being replaced anyway. And obviously to get the new one on, the seals will be tight. So what I suggest to do is usually, I sometimes use Vaseline or lubricant to release them. It depends on what you choose to use. I've never had a problem like that. Some people choose not to. It just depends on what you choose to use. And also what I advise is to bolt everything up while we're still here on the bench. You don't want to be bolting this up on back on the car. Trust me on that. It's a lot easier to do it like this on the bench on the bench than it is on the car. Obviously if we don't have them to take our hose off properly then there's a the problem, it was cracked. So there you go, as you can see in now, I don't know if you can see into the hole there, I've got my torch here. Th that's how clogged the CCV is. Completely clogged up and that hose was broken. Now I didn't even bend that pipe. And I don't know if you can see into here as well. Completely ruptured and broken inside the CCV itself. So I w obviously I haven't got a saw to open it, but I don't know if you could. Well, it's very clogged, very clogged. I don't know if you guys can see it now or not, but it's very, very clogged inside there. I'm just trying to shine my torch in so you lot can see. 
and get a deep view of what, what a ruptured PCV sit looks like. But that's it, this is the cause of the problem and I'm glad I found it now. Obviously, this is completely clogged, hence why blowing back oil back out, the, out into the cylinders. Now what we're gonna do is now we're just gonna take, oh sorry about that, this keeps the lock. There you go, that one's off. And now what we're gonna do is just take this whole CCV system off. So as you can see guys, now we're gonna remove the CCV system. And you just wanna take off all the bolts, the mounting bolts, because there's a mounting bracket there as well. You need to remove that mounting bracket. Oh, there we go. Oil leaking all onto the bench already from the blown PCB, and I ain't even done anything. Just moving this crankcase ventilation here, filter, causing oil to leak out onto, onto the bench. There's the signs of a blown CCV right there. And as you can see, we're gonna pull the connector right here. That's the connector for it. So it's probably the heat has ruptured. And you know what, let me just take off this hose here. I just got the whole system off, I've got to take this off as well now. Now I don't know if you can see in there how bad that is. It's completely clogged. I mean, if I put my finger in it, you could just see it's clogged of mud in there. It's just completely clogged. It shouldn't be like that. I can see the springs completely deteriorated inside as well. Yeah, it's completely clogged in there. And hence why this ain't breathing properly in there. I don't know if you can see in that one, how bad it is. But that's the signs of a blown PCV. So guys, what you wanna do is when you get this back on, first thing you wanna do is you wanna line it up, which it goes this way around. You wanna line it up this way so the brackets are like that, with the two holes at the top and the third one hole at the bottom. You wanna line it up perfectly inside the manifold and there's clips that will lock it into place as well to hold it as soon as you get it in place. Okay guys, so what you wanna do is you wanna bolt the first one back up here to the crankcase ventilation, which is here. And then you wanna use the bracket because the bracket has a lot of connections that go onto it in the car itself. So you just wanna do that. Put the first one up, secure it. And what you wanna do is pop bolt this one up, which is right here. Now, as you can see, I've done this in literally less than nearly 15 minutes now garage will charge you an arm and leg for this and they'll probably garage will probably hate me because i'm making this look very easy to do and they don't like that but this is a simple fact that this job is very very simple to do and garage is like rip people off for their labor i don't believe in it because this job is a do it yourself at home job for any really anybody if they follow the instructions that are set i'm gonna do is line up the other bolt properly in the in the hole if it don't line up line up the bracket with it and then just begin to tighten with the socket once it's in just like that begin to tighten it now you do have to remember what way the heat would go because obviously there's one connector that goes to the bottom which is for the engine that runs the full power the rest are for the heater hoses now you can see that's nice and tight but what we want to do is this one sits at the top here connector so you want to put that one in perfectly and tight it's right here and that one's in and snug. Now, obviously we're gonna be connecting up all the hoses. So what you wanna do is you wanna get the other hose and obviously you just wanna open it. Now obviously they, the seals are gonna be a bit tight as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is get my penetrating forward. So I'm gonna get silicone lubricant and lubricate all the O-rings. It's just, there's nothing this dries very, this dries very quickly. And obviously I'm using that, the WD-40 high performance silicone lubricant. Now, what you do is just dry it out. You don't need it, it's not right if it gets wet inside. It will dry off by the time, and now you should just click straight on. Okay. So as you can see, guys, I'm siliconing it all up, because obviously you will know the new CCV pipes are a bit stiff to get on at the start. So you have to be very careful. You've got to remember this is a new hose, so it will be very tight fit, but after it does go in. And the same for this one. 
Now what I usually do is just spray lubricant on it, lube up the pipes. You don't need to use really Vaseline for it. It's whatever you choose to use, but I use that and it all just snaps in perfectly. And then what you do is you get your tissue after and just dry the silicone off. It's just to help set the pipes and set the seals in. And then what you want to do next is you want to get this pipe. Then you want to bolt this one. You'll know where the connectors go by feel, because as I said, the fill pipes, you, when you plug them all up, their connectors only have got a certain length they can go to. So you see I'm, I'm now putting it on that. And obviously you want to spray it around here. Lube that up, lube it inside. This one you just snap into place, no problem. Like that. And now the other one, if we put on now, which is here, should be over there. As you can see, this is the one that goes to the top of the crankcase, but we're not going to be refitting that straight away. What you want to make sure you do is make sure these wiring are all plugged up correctly at the back here, because once you get it back on, especially the one for the, what you've got to work out is how it goes back to the oil drain pan. So you, you want to just turn it the cold round, and obviously it doesn't go back to the drain pan like that. It goes back to the drain pan that way and down. So then what you have to do is work out where you're going to put this. So if I just pull it up there, which is fine. If not, I'll just pull it out until I find the connector that it does go in, which could be this one. Yep, it's that one. So it will tell you which one it goes in anyway, so you don't have to worry too much about that. So as you can see, I'm now putting the manifold back in place. You want to make sure all these wiring harnesses are up before you start doing that. And what you want to do is align the manifold properly. And as you can see, all the connectors, you want to just line it all up and just sit it down and rest it while you connect everything up, like I do. Now, obviously you will see there's a PCB heater hose behind here. You've also got the PCB heater wire that runs from around here and the extra disc up wire. Now, that is getting in the way, which is the fuel line, which is acceptable. Stopping everything. You just got to remember to manage to get all the connectors as well at the same time up, which now I have. But obviously what I like to do is work my way around it and just put my hand in. And as you can see, I'm clipping everything now back in. I'm gonna reconnect everything up. As you can see, that's the PCB heater. You want to put that back in. Um, you also want to connect, reconnect the another couple of sensors, which are around here, which is the manifold absolute pressure sensor. And you also want to connect everything else that was loose from around here. So obviously, what we've got to do is line it up on the bolts, on the studs, and it should slip straight on. Like no issue. Obviously, there's a lot of electricals in this car, so it don't help. But as, as you can see, once it's back on, it's back on. But it's just reconnecting everything. So what you want to first thing you're going to want to reconnect is the throttle body. Obviously all the other wires you're going to have here, you should have your MAF sensor plug, you should have your disavow plug if you've got this is. and you should also have your junction box here, now that's connected, everything's not so hard as people make out on this car. All I'm looking for is all the holes to realign the connectors because I don't want them juggling about. As someone's already ripped off half the connectors off on this car, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna line this bolt back up. I need to get my socket so I can realign the bolt. So as you can see guys, now I'm bolting back on the electrical box that sits on the manifold, the bolts up to the manifold. I'm now bolting that back up. After I've bolted back up, we're then gonna move 
and start reconnecting up all the sensors. I will not be starting the car as I'm, I've got to do a valve cover change on this, which is the next job you're going to see me doing on this car. It is very time consuming. The valve cover is a lot more harder than this and requires a lot of patience as well, especially with these magnesium covers, as they're not as straightforward as most people know. So that's the next one you're going to be seeing me do. As you can see, it's very straightforward. Let's just connect everything back up the way it come off. Um, I don't know anyone that can say this is difficult or they can't do it. I wouldn't pay a garage to do this because this is a job that can be done yourself from home, which is very straightforward. All you've got to do is just remember how everything goes and you'll be fine. Like I say, first time I've done this, it was actually easier on this car and I've done it on the M54s. I've done it on the M42 engines as well. Just make sure everything's tight. And then what you want to do now is just realign all the bolts for the manifold, which they will be realigned automatically on their own. Like I say, this is not a job worth paying a garage for. It really, it really is a, it's a very cheap maintenance as well. You won't have to ever worry about changing it again once it's been changed. Because once it's been changed once, they don't usually go again. They're usually only blowed once, and then after that you need to change it. But you think this car's got 130,000 miles on it, so it is expected for the car to happen. Now all you want to do is you want to get your 11 mil socket again. And you want to just tighten all the bolts back down. So obviously, I'm going to start from the middle. And these ones are easy. Just bolt them down. And you'll feel when they're down, as you see, you see the manifold going into place. Like that, you don't want to over tighten them. You just want to know by feel. If you worked on cars, then you should know by feel when they're tight. Obviously everything's aluminum bolts on this car. So it's quite a simple job just to bolt everything down. Valve cover is the next job on this because obviously because of the blown PCB, it's blown the valve cover gasket. And obviously I need to clean up the engine bay. And as you can see here, I'm going backwards and forwards between them, switching to not put stress on them. And obviously you do want to be careful, you do not want to over tighten these bolts due to they will snap. You just need to know the right amount of pressure to put down on them. But as I said, if you do done cars, you should know when tight is tight. I've got torque wrenches, but I don't need to use them for this. Like I said, I've done this on my car. Didn't use torque wrench and everything's fine. And also you don't need to replace the manifold gaskets on the Seagull, as most people believe, makes you think you do. Now I can even see in that crankcase that oil is quite bad as well. It needs probably cleaning out. I'm probably gonna jet wash this valve cover off. to make sure everything is fully set and reconnected which it all is it makes it a lot easier because it don't have the other disc valve down there as that's an extra wire you don't want to play it about with as I say I have got my drill which I can use but I choose not to use it I just look like to do everything by hand as I like to have a feel of when everything's tight. Now as you can see guys, you just go back over them and we check them. Because as you've tightened all the other bolts, the other ones might come loose, which none of them have. 
which is a good thing. You want to be careful as well when you retighten, your sockets don't fall down. As you can see, that's all that done. Now what we need to do is reconnect all the sensors, which will be the mass airflow, the disavalve, which disavalve we're not reconnecting yet. We need to connect the front body boot back up, and obviously we're gonna put the throttle body back on now. So as you can see, this is the throttle body housing. Now for this, what you wanna do is like I say, I need to give that a good clean, first of all, before I put that back on the car, because obviously that's where the oil leaked. And I'm gonna clean that out because I'm not feeling like putting that back in with all the oil around it. Okay guys, so what you wanna do is you wanna start threading the throttle body bolts through. As you see, I've cleaned it now. And you just wanna start threading them through into their gap, like that. Once they line up, leave that one hanging and you wanna get the next one. And do the same thing. As I said, as you can see here, the washers don't come off. They don't come off at all unless you unscrew them off. So you ain't got to worry about losing them. And the same for this one. They do go in their holes once they've been tightened up, which we're gonna do now. We'll tighten it all up. And it will be ready to go. All you want to do is just align the other box, as I said. So, one will go in here. And as you can see, all the bolts, you do not have to over tighten these because you don't want to crush the gasket at all. You just want to do them tight enough and snug that they're not going to let air escape either and cause an air leak. Like I said, the quickest way to do it is to just tighten them up with a the socket and then tighten them up fully. That's the way I usually do it anyway, but I was just doing them because I've already tightened them. Let's see that one's tightened. And that one's tightened, so now we want to just tighten them up. As you can hear, it's a squeak like so and then you want to just reconnect the connector put body connector now after you've done that once you make sure everything's connected connect the reconnect the disser flap which is right here that one gets reconnected as you can see everything's now reconnected you want to just reconnect these hoses here one there that's the electrical connector then you want to replace this one which is right here and then obviously you just want to go around and inspect all the wires, nothing's trapped, nothing's caught, nothing's hanging out. Make sure everything's tight in its place, make sure all the wires are in, the PCVs all in properly, all the wiring harnesses are in, which is what I like to check after, make sure all the wires are in. And then you've only got one gap which is for the top hose. So everything's reconnected guys. Now um, I was going to show you how to reconnect the air box, but I don't think I'll have to do show you how to do that as you've seen that on my other videos. Um, the only thing is you need to remember to put that oil pressure sensor switch back on. Obviously this is just for the math. You know how to reconnect the air intake hose as you saw me remove. You want Jubilee clip, put your hand behind these, take these off, the electrical harness off here. Put your hand behind and just undo them. Um, thanks for watching guys. This is BMW Dr. Dean here. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. Um, my next video is gonna be about the valve cover on this, which you'll see is coming up. And it's BMW Dr. Dean here. Goodbye.